I think it's interesting that the term mindfulness has taken on the meaningful and umbrella relationship to so much and that mindfulness practices, as they're often termed, you know, especially those that fall into a somewhat narrow set of contemplative practices or, or concentration or awareness practices, um, seems to, in many ways, at least to me, um, tether the two as if there's a special relationship between mindfulness practices and mindfulness. One of my favorite to share and favorite personally um, definitions of mindfulness, because I think it's so instructive, because it points us in such a, it points us so well, is um, the ability to tell the difference between what's taking place and the story we tell ourselves about what's taking place, which you set in motion for all of us. And it's, I think, so useful, Sharon, because it's, it's, it's not narrow in the, in the way it, it talks about that. And it really talks about one of the something that can be explored in so many different meaningful avenues. But if we think about mindfulness in the way you, you just set it up for us, or at least I just quoted you, uh, and these practices, it, it seems to suggest that there's all these other practices, right? And let's move away from uh, love and kindness and some of the very central practices, even within this, these traditions, but journaling and prayer and, um, having you know supportive meaningful relationships and conversations with people and being with a pet and solitude uh they too perhaps point us in the same direction um but there might be some subtle differences that have a privileging one might say especially if they're in this school of teaching and reflecting on can you talk a little bit about those relationships, because on the one hand, and I'll just speak personally, I'm very keen on not having mindfulness practices be regarded as special in some way, even though they can be immensely useful in ways. And when they're called mindfulness practices in the service of mindfulness, which seems to be like the big, the big you know, lottery in some people's minds, um, there might be some confusion uh, or people become especially um, interested in getting these practices down because they're the path. And, and yet in many ways they are the path or a path. So if you could speak to that in whatever way that resonates with you, I'd mm -hmm. be very grateful. Um, well, I have a strong affinity for mindfulness practices. Um, I think they are a path, you know, and a very direct path. It's like strength training. That doesn't mean the only place you're gonna be experiencing or deepening the quality is in that gym, so to speak. Um, but even in some of the examples that you use, there's so many ways of doing those things. There are ways of exercising them <clears throat> that are incredibly present and whole. There's certainly ways of exercising them that are pro forma and not really present or um, divided in some way. You're obliged to do something or someone else is watching you do something or maybe not being with a pet, you know, but... Uh, even there, you know, what we bring to the moment um, is such a significant factor in how we reap the reward of what we're doing. I mean, how many times have we been with good friends and beautiful supportive relationships and we're not paying any attention? You know, we're consumed with some other worry or we don't feel deserving of the affection people are showing us and we sort of go somewhere else or we're thinking obsessively about the email we need to write, you know? So there's a certain quality of presence that I think transforms anything. I mean, you could also sit and be with your breath and, and not really be present, you know? So it's not like that's the perfect medium, but I see that as strength training or, you know, some dedicated period. It doesn't have to be in the form of sitting, but some dedicated period we are actually practicing coming back and being there. And then uh, those, all those other experiences are um, rich, you know, and alive rather than just kind of performed in some way. So, um, you know, we talk about, you could say two aspects to the practice. One is that formal dedicated period, five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes a day where you're sitting or you're walking and your goal, your intention is to cultivate 
qualities like mindfulness and compassion and so on. You're not sitting down to also think about graduate school or, you know, that may come up, but that's not your intention. And then we have what um, this wise old Tibetan Lama high up in the Himalayas once termed short moments many times. You know, before you answer a call, taking a few breaths, um, sitting down to drink that cup of tea and saying, I'm going to unitask, I'm just going to do this. Or here I am with my dog, you know, who's like, uh, annoying me mostly because it's it's responsibility and I'm not you know I have too much going on right now and I'm gonna actually just take in the fact that this is this like super loving cuddly thing you know or an older dog or you know that uh, is vulnerable and, and let me really take them in or I'm gonna stop for a moment and appreciate those friends who are are reaching out to me or who I know I can reach out to and maybe I'm gonna reach out to someone else and offer some help in some way because of that moment of stopping and appreciation. So the manifestations of presence are infinite. And I think they're all rewarding in some way.